So today I'm going to do a little bit of a greenhouse update. I've had this greenhouse for maybe like three weeks, almost almost a month I think. And there are definitely some things I've learned since having it. So I definitely want to do an update for you. There are a few adjustments that I have made and there are some more adjustments that I will be making today. The first thing is if you watch my original video of setting up this mini greenhouse, I showed you this mini fan and originally I was just going to leave the fan inside and then I was going to turn it on a couple hours a day. Well, I hated that fan. It like kept dying um, and I don't know, I just didn't like it. I feel like it didn't provide enough airflow. So what I've been doing actually is I've been opening the greenhouse all the way like this and then taking an actual fan this is just like a fan that we use in the summer um pointing it at the greenhouse like this and then doing um and letting it spin so it reaches you know all the plants that are over here as well as the plants in the greenhouse and um this fan has a timer on it so i just set it for an hour and then i do this every few days so that's the first adjustment i've made um i still have my mini oil diffuser i don't know if you can see it down there this way down this way that's a mini oil diffuser um i still like it it's actually you know like a perfect size for this mini greenhouse so after i air it out for a couple hours usually i'll leave the fan on for like one or two hours and then sometimes i'll even just leave it up overnight just so it kind of doesn't get like moldy and then the next day so I only usually pump up the humidity when it's bright outside because I don't want it to like mold so um so usually the next day what I'll do is that I'll fill up the oil diffuser close this mini greenhouse and then I'll just let the whole thing run all the way through and then I won't open the greenhouse for a couple of days um, and usually the humidity when it's running will get up to about a hundred percent and then obviously it'll dissipate throughout you know the next couple of days usually end up around like 90 percent which is like more than enough but because it's so humid that's why you need to air it out and also every couple of days so that's kind of my routine every week every you know a couple of days air it out every couple of days pump up the humidity again so that's been great um but so right now underneath here i just have some cardboard just to protect my carpet um and i saw plant me ashley put the top of a bin so i wanted to stole the lid off of a bin that i already had so um let's hope it fits so i'm gonna pull it out and then put this lid on the bottom because um the cardboard has been working but because the humidity is so high the cardboard does get a, like a little bit damp so i feel like the plastic will be a little bit better so that's going to be an adjustment that i make today and then another adjustment that i'm going to make so i have a grow light up here and those that's primarily for the plants that are on this table but it doesn't really get down here it looks bright right now because i have filming lights on but it's actually pretty dark down here um the plants that are down here are definitely not responding as well as the plants that are up in the top shelf and i haven't been able to put any plants in the bottom shelf because it's just so dark so what i have done is that i got some strip lights that we're going to open right now and i'm planning on adhering those strip lights to this rack right here and then i'm going to remove this rack completely because first of all i think that's going to be a little close um, to have lights right here that's maybe only like six inches and i feel like that's going to burn a lot of leaves so i'm going to put the strip lights right here and after i remove this that's going to give me space to put bigger plants because some of my plants are you know like kind of outgrowing the space up here and it's been hitting the top of the door when I try to put them back into the greenhouse after watering so it'll both give me an opportunity to put some bigger plants and um, it'll also give me an opportunity to grow more things down here because there'll be a better concentration of light. Um, I didn't really measure these lights when I ordered them so hopefully they'll work. I ordered them off of Amazon. I'll link them down below. So yeah that's what I'm gonna do today. So let's open these lights. Okay, 
So what I'm doing is that it comes with this clip, comes with screws, and you're supposed to screw it through this hole onto the wall or the ceiling, and then this clip attaches to the back of the light as so, then you would clip it in. Um, but because, you know, these are racks, obviously, what I'm doing is I'm putting the clip on top of the rack, I'm putting the light fixture underneath, and then just clicking it in. So far, it looks like it's working. I might need an extension cord but before I try to plug it in um, what I'm gonna do first is pull the whole thing out so I can put this I am sweating, but that fit perfectly. Let me show you. Tell me that is not the most perfect fit ever. I am completely sweating though. That was hard. Okay, now to deal with the lights. I just got this today. Um, it's, you know, like a bunch of extra outlets. <sighs> Okay, just got this. I'm gonna plug it into this outlet over here. We have light! Okay, so now I'm gonna move a bunch of these plants. Let's move them out of here for now. Now I'm gonna cut off this rack. And then I'm just gonna slip this pole out. So you don't need that anymore. Okay, I'm back. My hair is up because I'm sweating. Um, so this definitely works, which is awesome. So now I'm gonna try to put stuff back into the greenhouse, rearrange a little bit. And then while I'm doing that, I'm also gonna show you some updates about how the plants have been doing since they've been in the greenhouse. Okay, one of the most impressive plants so far that has really loved the humidity is my philodendron birkin. So this leaf, I don't know, it's a little bit damaged, but this leaf came out um, in the greenhouse and then immediately after that, this leaf got put out. It's definitely grown at possibly double the rate um, since I've had it, since I put it in the greenhouse. So it definitely really, really likes it. Um, the only thing is that my Birkin does not like direct light, so I probably won't put it on this shelf. I'll put it more around like here. Okay, this plant is definitely getting moved to the bottom. It's way too big for that top part now. It keeps getting crushed whenever I put it in and out of the greenhouse. This is my Calathea orbifolia. I split it recently. There's a video on that if you want to watch that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put my variegated syngonia up the bottom too because this moss pole is quite big. Um, it's trying to put out new growth, if you can see like right there, but it's been growing so slow. It hasn't put out a new leaf at all since I got it and I got it in November, so mm, maybe this light will do something. 
So I have a whole tray right here and these are starter plugs of Philodendron Birkins and these are definitely going to go down here as well. Um, I don't think these are the lightning bolt jewel orchids. I don't think I'm going to put these down there though because I think that's too much light. Um, jewel orchids don't really like a lot of light. So those might go on the top shelf instead. But all of the baby Birkins will be going in down here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and move all of my avocados down here as well. Um, I named all of them. This one is Frost. This is Avo Taco. And Avo Taco is having a little bit of an issue. It was kind of showing signs of rot, so I cut down the stem. So we'll see how it does. This one is egg. It's doing pretty well. Um, I put this one in mid-November. This one is Lewis and it's just taking off. Okay, let's see. Put this one out. Oh look, this one has a little nubbin too. This one um, is still unnamed, so if you want to name this one, leave it down below. And then these two I just put in, um, they're new, so I put them in on the 30th of January. These are the teeny tiny avocado that you can get at Trader Joe's. This one's Wilbur. And then this one is Mary. Um, if you can hear that noise, that's because I have some bamboo outside of my window and it's really windy today. And when it's windy, it scratches up against the window and makes that horrible noise. This is a philodendron Rio that I've been trying to root in sphagnum moss for a while. Throw this down here too. Why not? Okay. Maybe we'll do some updates. The variegated string of hearts, I'm going to leave them where they are. Um, because I think they're doing really well there. They have just taken off inside the greenhouse. There is so, so, so much new growth. Um, all the parts that aren't pink is all new growth. There's so much. This one has maybe the least out of all of the ones that are up there, but I did take out all of the variegated string of pearls. I don't think they liked that much humidity. Um, it kind of looked a little bit like there were a couple pearls that were looking a little bit like, like rotted. So I, I took them out and now they're just chilling over here. But I'm going to leave the variegated string of hearts where they are. And then this is just a Marble Queen Pothos. Um, I feel like this one hasn't grown at all really since I transferred it to soil. So I'm going to put it down here and see if maybe the extra light will do something. Um, this is a Cebu Blue. This hasn't done that much for me either, but I see a lot of new growth. And then I just did the bobby mid pin method onto the stem there so hopefully I'll get some more growth out of that stem right there maybe put this leg over here this prayer plant I just moved um, into the greenhouse and we'll see how it does I just moved this so I don't know how it's gonna do just yet Same with this Stramanthi. Um, I feel like it might be getting a little bit too much light because this new leaf that came out, the back isn't pink. And I feel like that might be getting too much light. So I'm gonna put it on this side of the greenhouse. This is the Mikens. Mikens has been putting out quite a bit of new leaves lately. So I think it likes it in here. 
This is the Hoya Polonira and the Philodendron Rio. I think the um I think the Polonira is dying on me. But I'm just gonna put it in here and see what happens. This is the Monster Addisonia that I unboxed in my um, mystery box video. I gave it a little bit of a haircut the other day. I had to cut off half of this leaf and I chopped off a section of this leaf. Um, it just looked really damaged and I don't think it was going to recover from the shipping issue. So this is still in sphagnum moss. I'm going to put it oh, probably down here. We'll see what happens. This is the Skindapsis trebly I unboxed recently. Um, I'm gonna reintegrate this plant into the greenhouse. It's never been in the greenhouse before, so we'll see how it does. And then, let's see. Lol. Uh, this is the polka dot plant that I deadheaded earlier this month. I'm gonna plop it down here, see what happens. This is my platter of propagation. Um, this is also from that mystery box video. This is the Raphidophora tetrasperma. Is it focusing weird? Okay, this is the Raphidophora tetrasperma. It's been in LECA. Um, so far, there is no root growth, but we'll see. So it was in just water for a while, but then the bottom part of the stem started rotting, so I cut off that rotted part, and then I put it in LECA, and the LECA, the water's only up to here. So hopefully, it'll keep it moist, but not wet, um, and I'm gonna hope that stops the rotting. And then in here, we also have the two pieces of Ludicia Discolor that I've been propagating since mid-December. Um, I think I might switch these to sphagnum pretty soon, but I finally did get some roots on this top cutting. Finally got some roots on there. So then I'm probably going to transfer these to soil pretty soon. And then this is a Skindapsis exotica leaf that fell off my big plant, but it does have a node right here. So I'm just going to plop it some water. And then, finally, this is the Syngonium erythophyllum, um, or the Lanny Cartier Road, as you can see. Not doing so hot from that mystery box unboxing video. You can definitely see the damage. Which part is damaged? So I doubt that baby leaf is going to unfurl, so I think I'm probably going to end up cutting it off soon. But yeah, so far no roots and it looks like that, so hmm, we'll see what happens. So these have been living on this plate. And I'm just going to leave them. I think they're fine right here. So I also have this very long philodendron rio that's been in here. There's some new growth, um, like here, but I feel like this one just hasn't been doing all that much for me, so I might... Interesting. Interesting. There's like a new branch that decided to grow right here. So I don't know if I care enough to put this back in the greenhouse, I might just try to find another space for it. Just cause it takes up so much room, you know? Maybe I can like branch it on top. Okay, I'm gonna have to find another space for this cause I don't think I want to put this in there. This is the other section of the Ludicia discolor. As you can see, it's finally starting to unfurl its first leaf. So I'm really excited about that. So 
the last plant that's going to be going in the greenhouse will eventually be this monstera thai constellation i'm going to put it on the top shelf but i just got this plant so it's still in its isolation period so right now it's just sitting far away from the rest of my plants but once its isolation period is over this will also be going into the greenhouse okay i'm gonna give you a tour of what this looks like variegated string of hearts raftophora tetrasperma there's also a skin dapsis back there ludicia discolor the lightning bolt um jewel orchids right there this is the small calathea orbifolia that i split next level so stromanthi trio star back there marble queen pothos philodendron birkin the tray of propagations I showed you, skin daps, this trebly moonlight, prayer plant, Cebu blue pothos, Hoya polyneira, um, philodendron micans, that's a polka dot plant. Then down here is the big calathea orbifolia variegated syngonium. All of these over here are avocados, that's a philodendron rio. Marble Queen Pothos, most of these over here are starter plants for Philodendron Birkins, and that's the Monster Anisonia. That's the oil diffuser. So since I'm finally done with this, what I'm gonna do now is fill up that oil diffuser and I'm gonna let it run and see and make sure that it's okay to run that when the lights are on. I also wanted to show you that this is what the whole setup looks like without my filming lights on. So you can see that's getting considerably more light than this section up top now, but I think that'll be good. Okay, and finally, this is what it looks like when it's all fogged up. The humidity inside now is around 99 to 100%, so you can't really see any of the plants anymore, but after, you know, it finishes running, it just starts to dissipate, and then you'll be able to see the plants again. So that's all I have for you today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below, and I'll see you soon. Bye!